Okay, everyone, I'm Professor Student. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, warming your epoxy or your resins. Uh, and the reason why is this is a very important topic because we're pretty much in uh, winter season and pretty much everywhere is cold as heck right now. And if you're into woodworking all year round, any time of the year or any, all the seasons, you know that when it comes to winter, your epoxy gets thick. Uh, very hard to mix um, and of course that affects uh, a lot of things especially if you're trying to do a, uh, a clear uh, table or furniture or what, anything like that you could get cl a cloudy uh, result versus the crystal clear that you want also it might take not take very well the blending it might not cure well etc etc everything goes bad in the winter and it pretty much does the same thing in the summer Right now we're talking about the uh, winter conditions. So uh, three methods that uh, I have found, I've come across and I've tried, and all three methods work. Um, some better than others, obviously. Uh, but these are, if you don't have a temperature check, something to check your temperatures, a thermometer or something like that. Uh, these are three quick methods to at least get your, uh, your epoxies, your resins to, uh, operating conditions. Um, of course, you want to be somewhere around 70, 70 to 80 degrees when you're mixing your epoxy, but if you're not able to do your temp checks, these are easy ways to kind of sort of get you to where you need to be. Uh, one of the methods, of course, is the uh, hot box method. You'll need a cardboard box. You're going to need some foil paper, sunlight, of course, uh, some paint of the black or any dark color, Second method will be uh, the warming bucket. You're gonna need a bucket. Um, and a bucket basically large enough to cover the, uh, the resin that you're putting inside of it. You wanna be able to seal it up. And of course you need a lid for that bucket and then some warm water. And then finally, the uh, ice chest oven is what I call it. Uh, you're gonna need an ice chest, hopefully an old one because you don't wanna really damage or kind of beat up your new one. And uh, some warm water. And I'll be showing you all three methods and taking you through them. And uh, let's get started. Okay, so the first method that we are kind of talking about, and I'll go a little bit more in depth on this here, is the hot box method. Uh, we got our foil paper, we got our paint, we have our resin here. And there's some other epoxies. I just do there for the heck of it. And this is going to be our box. And basically what we're going to be doing here is we're going to spray paint the outside of this box with our black paint. We're going to line the inside with foil. We're going to place our epoxies and resins on the inside here. We're going to set it out in the sun until our resin is at a good water-like consistency. Uh, the other method, same idea. We're going to take our bucket here. Uh, with the warming bucket method and we're going to fill put our resin inside first obviously because we need to know our water levels and we're going to fill it uh, you can either fill it up about three quarters up the side of the resin or you can put it all the way in it's up to you really um, with warm water you don't want to do hot water because you don't want it to rapidly heat up or mess with the uh, chemical balance that's inside the resins and also you don't want to mess with the integrity of the bottle itself or your container if it's too hot you could get some warping damaging you can mess with a lot of chemicals a lot of things can go bad if you if your water is just too hot so you just want to go with some warm water um, and then we're going to put the lid we're going to fill it up either all the way or three quarters of the way uh, on top of your container inside and you're going to put a lid on top and let it sit there until your epoxy is no longer thick it's more like a water consistency also uh one of the better methods um so you can obviously here you can put several containers or bottles inside of an ice chest like i said it's easier if you use an older one that way if anything goes wrong as far as putting hot water in your ice chest which is maybe not the best that good idea so it's easier to use an old one or one you don't really care about um but you can put several of them in here, you know what I mean? Here you could probably put four of them in here, which is good. 
um, at least for rotations, same idea as the warming bucket over here idea. Um, you take this, fill it up, uh, maybe to your level here on the inside with uh, warm water. You can easily just close this lid and uh, forget about it to when you're ready. And basically, all three methods are basically pre-prep is what I like to call it. So when you're getting ready to prep for a job, before you do all your cuts, you're figuring out your containers, I mean, the size of your table, and your molds, you're cutting up for your molds. Uh, this is what you would do first because obviously it's gonna take a few minutes for all three methods to basically take effect and get your resin and your consistencies and stuff to where it needs to be. So this is what you wanna do first. Before you do anything, throw these guys in their conditions, either in the sun, warm water, warm water, and seal them up. Um, and before you start uh, going anywhere else or doing anything else. Um, I'll walk you through these two here, basically your, the little uh, ice chest oven idea and the warming bucket are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll kind of show you to give you an idea. But uh, I'll kind of walk you through this one in a minute. And with the uh, hot box method, I'll kind of show you more of what I'm talking about there. Okay, here we are. We just finished step one. Of course, that's uh, taking our hot box we're spray painting the outside of it all the way around even if you don't think this backside is going to see much sunlight because let's say we have this fence right here but it is because everything reflects sunlight reflects off of everything and you got to get every bit of sunlight you can so that's first step there doing everything in black and as you can already see we're getting us some sunlight in this cold weather Okay, here we are with our warming bucket method. Um, obviously, here we are, it's got the water in there. It's a little past three quarters full, at least as far as going up on the, the container inside itself. Um, of course, the obvious question is gonna be, well, what's warm water? Um, and it, it, I mean, you should know what lukewarm is, or pretty much warm. You don't want it, you should be able to stick your hand in it, and obviously it doesn't burn your hand. It's just warm to the touch. Um, if you're in colder regions, colder areas, and maybe you want to go a little bit more, if it's warmer regions, then obviously a little bit less. Um, so it's totally up to you, but uh, either way it'll work. Actually, epoxy kind of uh, warms up really, really quick. At least that's as far as, you know, me messing with it. I've always found it warms up really fast. So basically you're here and, you know, you have our lid. Throw your lid on top. You don't have to necessarily like push it down to seal it. You can, but just putting it on top where it's, you know, it's not technically sealed, but it still has room to vent if it has to with the heat pressure and done. With this method, depending on the, your, uh, the temperature of the water inside of it, of course, anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes, you'll pretty much be ready to rock and roll. And get to mixing okay third method uh, where I guys showed you guys or talked with you guys about the ice chest oven what I call it uh, same idea as a bucket we have our warm water inside we have our containers in there it looks like I could probably fit two to three more depending on how much I stuffed them in there uh, I wouldn't stuff them in there too, too much, only because you want it to be able to evenly heat up. You don't want to be necessarily blocking anything, but either way from here, it's simple. Close the lid and you're done with it. Same idea, depending on the temperature of the water inside, you know, 10 to 30, 45 minutes, uh, you should be able to rock and roll. Obviously, make sure that you're little uh, release valve on the side there is closed don't do like I did and try filling up the water uh, in my garage that's why I'm outside and all the water goes everywhere as I'm filling it up um, which was uh, hilarious to people watching not necessarily to me so in general how do you know when your epoxy is pretty much ready your resin is ready 
uh, is when it's very similar to smooth flowing like water, which is I'm not sure if this really gives you a good idea of what I'm talking about, but you can definitely see the sloshing and stuff going on. That's a good consistency for your epoxy. If it's not flowing like water, as I said earlier, then it's probably not warm enough and it's gonna mess with your clarity. You should, well, not necessarily, but you could end up with clarity issues. Uh, you could end up with uh, curing issues. It's too slow, it's inconsistent. You're gonna end up with uh, pockets not even curing at all. Possibly, these are possibly not 100%. Um, but it can also work in the same if it's too hot outside. It'll obviously clear way too fast and doesn't give you enough pot lifetime, which is, you know, the time it takes for you to be able to work with it and uh, do what you gotta do. Now, of course, the downside of doing the hot box method is these lovely things called clouds who know that you need sun and don't care that you need sun in order for your hot box to work. It's, this isn't gonna work without sun. So we will wait for some hole. Oh, I see, I think we're gonna get a pocket of sun and go from there. So here we go with the uh, hot box method. Looks like we got some sun. Of course, the hotter it is, the better it reflects. We don't have much sun because we got a lot of cloud cover actually today so you can already know see tell what the limitations are on this method um you can easily also move it further away from something you think you got too much shadow to get a little bit more reflection reflective action going on back there you can move further away from a wall i just had it there just to show uh but this method does work i've used it i tried it out uh, it's a lengthy process depending on the sun and the heat of course sometimes it goes quick sometimes it could take a while but that's a method okay as a final recap uh, going over what we know uh, again uh, warming your resins uh, the winter is basically what we're talking about. Uh, I showed you the hot box method, the warming bucket method, and the uh, ice chest oven method. Uh, and obviously there's pros and cons. The hot box method is usually your last, 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 last resort. Um, basically because you're highly dependent on sunlight. Um, and on a cloudy day, as in my video showed, your day could be very, very long if you're trying to do this method and you're trying to get your uh, epoxy um, at least in a workable temperature. Uh, your warming bucket and your ice chests uh, are really good uh, second methods. Um, and I would have to lean more, a little bit more towards the ice chest oven method only because you can put multiple bottles in there and you're not gonna just be mixing up one at a time like you would with this bucket, but I mean, if you had several buckets lined up, you could still do this method and put them all in different buckets. But um, if you're using the same buckets to mix your resins as you are to warm your resins, this method right here might not be the best idea. Uh, you might want to go to the ice chest uh, idea. Um, that way you can free up all your buckets or at least some of your buckets uh, that all in all that's a nutshell uh, i'm sure there's plenty plenty of other ways of warming your epoxies in the winter um, if you have cooler better and faster uh, ideas other than the microwave idea because that's kind of like a no duh idea um, and either way with the microwave you can only put so much in there at a time it's a headache uh, i've tried that too um, i don't really like that method um, but anyways, if you have other methods of warming your epoxy in the winter um, that you've tried and you've done and had plenty of success with, um, let us know. Shoot me in the chat. I'll see it and respond to it as best as I can. I'm a professor student. Uh, my idea is to teach you what I learn. What I learn, I will teach you. And we can all learn and teach each other together. 
And with that, this is warming your resins on epoxy. And I am out of here.